be speaking on something different from what every other speaker I've spoken on, and I must apologize in advance as I've been apologizing to everybody. I know there are so many persons here. All right, so um, how many of us here can or ever do frequently decide to go out on a hangout with our friends and just talk without the use of our phones, of course? How many of us here ever frequently just decide to take a stroll with our friends and just discuss about life without the use of our phones, of course? Or how many of us have ever just sat at home for over three hours and discussed with family and friends about life achievements, our past experiences, you know, and just catch fun without the use of our phones over three hours at home? Or how many of us here have ever sat at dinner with our family? Let's even bring you closer with your roommates. Of course, we know we don't eat at the same time. Roommates, you understand? How many of us have ever sat at dinner with our roommates and do not use our phone over dinner and just discuss about the day's activities, how things went, and you know, just laugh and tell stories of our childhood days? How many of us? Don't worry. Let me be the judge. Hereby, pronounce my generation guilty. On what counts? My generation is guilty of the inability to build deep, meaningful relationships. How do you plead? I plead guilty. A friend of mine shared um, a story with me of how she was at the National Youth Service Course for those who are listening that are not Nigerians, National Youth Service Corps, NYC, is compulsory for every Nigerian after four years in school. And sometimes you know the four years is four years extra, plus plus, depending on the course you are doing, or the school you are going. You know, some places is four plus plus two, four plus plus one, and then sometimes you now have a CO, you understand the plus plus plus. And so she was at NYSC with her friend, um, you know, doing her uh, doing, uh, duty to the country. And her cousin was having a wedding ceremony. And she ran down all the way, in 2016 anyways, this happened. And she ran down all the way from her NYSC center. And she came down for the wedding. And on getting to the wedding, she saw something that struck her. It was, it was amazing. And what she saw was several members of communities, friends of her parents for over 10 to 15 years. And these are persons that she thought they no longer had relationships with, their, with her parents. And then as she sat at the wedding, she began wondering how these people got to know that the wedding was happening. I mean, how? Are they here? Why are they here? These are persons that she has never heard from for 15 to 20 years, and they are here at the wedding. If, I, if it was me, of course, I would have thought they came for the food. But they, they didn't. Because immediately after the wedding, she went to ask her parents, and she was bothered. And her parents and those persons kept on building relationships. They kept in contact with themselves. They exchanged phone calls, exchanged text messages, used to have friends meeting, those of us that our parents have that we know what I'm talking about. Once every month where your father goes to different person's houses and they eat and cook, just for eating and cooking and laughing. And they have those things and those things help them build quality relationships. Now, the problem is not that it came there. The problem is that we don't have that. I mean, she, she said that after 10, she remembers that after 10 years of living secondary school, None of her friends in secondary school, or maybe just one, was she able to build such a relationship with. She doesn't know what's happening in their lives. And some of us are here, you don't know what's happening in your last secondary school mates' lives until you see a post on Facebook that says, just waited. And so when you're dis discussing with other people, you say, oh, one of my classmates just got waited. Did you go? No. You knew about it after it happened. And so our parents, who do not have a smartphone, have a smart relationship. And 
I find my generation guilty of that. I had a terrible nightmare recently, and um, I actually I had a nightmare that I woke up late for an appointment that I had. Now, in that nightmare, I woke up at 5 a.m. after snoozing my alarm three times. You know what I'm talking about? Those of us that set three alarms on our phones, 4.30, 4.45, 5.30, 5 a.m. So when 4.30 knocks, snooze. 4.45, snooze. You know the third one. You will not want to snooze. Okay, so I woke up 5 a.m. in that nightmare and I the first thing I needed to the first thing I had to do or the first thing I got to do was to quickly reply the messages that I had on my social mediums. Okay, my WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, everything. And I started replying the messages and I looked up and I found out that I've used one hour, 30 minutes to find those messages. Quickly, I said. So that was 6.30, my definition of quickly. So 6.30, I got to, I got to the bathroom seeing I was late and I took my bath. And while I was taking my bath, I was hearing the sound of messages. Tum -tum, tum -tum, tum -tum. And some of us that know how to use our phones, know you have several tones for several medias, mediums rather. Instagram has its own. You know that this is an Instagram message and sometimes one of the things I look forward to when I'm checking my Instagram is if I have a new follower. And so while I was in the bathroom, I was hearing the sound and I was in a haste to quickly leave the bathroom and come and see, do I have a new follower? Do I have a new friend? Do I have someone to chat with? Do I have a message I need to reply? And then I saw that I, oh, I had a lot of them after checking. And then I decided again to quickly reply those messages and when I quickly reply those messages, I quickly discovered that I had spent another one hour replying those messages and ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, I was late on my 8 a.m. appointment. And when that one day comes, I hope that we will not blame technology because technology has been a good teacher anyways. We've just been the ones who we are are and continue to be the bad students. I remember every exam that I wrote in this school. This one is a familiar story. All of us know it. After exams, results comes out, and then your friends begin to ask, what did you get? If you had a five, your response is what? Beautiful, I had a five. Now, if you had a two, your response is? They gave me two. And I, I just hope that this will not be the response we we'll give to technology in the future when we have true presence in the future to call friends, I hope we will not get to that point and we say, I have, I have good friends. And when we do not, I hope we will not say that social media took away all my friends. If we live in the same room and we still converse with ourselves with the use of chats, then I apologize, we are not friends. And my generation is sick My generation is sick. Today, it's just so easy to drink poison. Tie a rope around your neck and you're done. Sniper away, lagoon jump, get depressed. Ladies and gentlemen, suicide is on the rise. And you may blame economy as much as you want, but I choose to blame someone else. I blame us. Because I think that today people are more lonely than ever before. According to a research by Cigna Health Insurance Company, carried out a research with 20,000 Americans, and they discovered that disconnection and loneliness has played a huge factor in depression and anxiety. And in that research, 46% of the respondents of that research admitted to always, always feeling alone. Now, that's not all. Another research by AJPM discovered that when persons tend to spend more time online than real life, than with real life people, they are more prone to social isolation. They are more prone to loneliness. And that's, I mean, ironical because you have so many persons you're chatting with, you have so many persons you talk with on your phones, and then how can you say that you're lonely? But that's the truth. Because there's no real person. 
that I have a smiling face or I post a picture of a happy person on my social media does not mean that I'm happy. That I post in front of a car or inside of a car does not mean that I have one. We know those kind of persons, you know. My house, happy old formula. But if we judge our lives based on what happens in social media, we will find ourselves more lonely and depressed than ever before, and that may just be the beginning of our death. But the moment we begin to trace our steps and begin to really value friendships, true friendship, away from this social media shenanigans, we may be saving the world of suicide. And so I ask us today a true question. Do you have new friends or e-friends? Or better still, let me help you. What value do you place in relationships? Why do I need you to answer that question? Once again, I charge my generation to cut. My generation is guilty as charged. They are guilty for being more of e-friends than real friends. How do you keep? 